final showcase for the XFL. Tell me, uh, you know, you've, you've done the other ones. Are you impressed with what you've seen so far? Very much so. Uh, I'm impressed with two things, really. One, the quality of the players who've come out and, and participated. Uh, these are all guys that are hungry to play football and have been in the NFL or in the CFL, other leagues, and just want to continue to play and, and continue their careers. But also, you know, totally impressed with the response we've got here in St. Louis, uh, not just from the players, but from fans. You know, we've got people that come out just to watch a tryout, basically. Uh, and it shows me how deep the passion is in this city for professional football. And, of course, we all are aware of what happened, you know, and don't want to dwell on the past. Uh, but they're, you know, we're very excited about the, you know, some of the passion level that we've witnessed from uh, fans here in St. Louis. Yeah, that was. I was going to ask you, you know, why was it important to have a, a XFL team here in St. Louis? I think we're the only city that does not have a NFL team in the same city as the F XFL. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. So, uh, you know, we consider St. Louis to be an NFL caliber city, obviously, right? Uh, just given all that's happened and you know the support that folks uh, historically have been given here, and how well the Blues and the Cardinals and you know looks like a new MLS team coming as well, which is all it's awesome, you know, for the momentum of the of the of, of the sports community here. Uh, but we're we're super excited. This this could be, ironically, right? You know, our best market in a sense because uh, there's just such a groundswell of support for pro football. And people miss it, quite honestly. They miss it. Uh, do we know how many people uh, tried out today, did, went through the drills? Yeah, so we had about 145, 150 guys out here today. That's a little bit more than we've had at the other showcases. We've probably averaged about 110 or 115 of the other showcases. So all in all, we've looked at probably close to 900 guys. Uh, we will offer uh, probably about 400 of the guys, you know, the, the opportunity to be in our draft pool. Our next big group of folks will be the guys who get cut. Uh, in September, early September, Labor Day, uh, from the NFL, right? So every NFL team, Labor Day, has to go from 90 players when they start training camp down to 53. That's a big, uh, that's a big tranche of players that'll come out. So uh, that'll be another big group of guys that we'll put in our draft pool, and then uh, early October we'll have our draft. Um, I know the season kicks off next next February. Um, you know. It, I love the fact that St. Louis had such a, uh, a great turnout, special turnout. Um, do you still, I, you know, I know you spent time in the NFL. Right. You know, do you still have the same passion for the game that you did when you were a player, uh, the same excitement on, you know, the season opener? Are you, are you feeling the, the buzz right now as a, the commissioner? Uh, I am. Uh, I, I love the game. I, the game's been a part of my life and my family's life, obviously, for, you know, many, many years. Uh, the game has changed, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's gotten a lot better. I think it's actually gotten a lot safer, quite honestly, even though the athletes are bigger and stronger and faster than they've ever been. Uh, but the medical care and the preparation and the weight training and the nutrition and all those things have also you know, Im Im improved dramatically. The coaching, I think, is better than ever. I mean, I think the game of football writ large is at an all-time high, and that's one of the reasons why I think this is a great time for us as an alternative league, a springtime league, you know, to establish ourselves and get and get started. So uh, I still have the same excitement, the same tingling when I, you know, uh, that I remember as a player, you know, going back to being a you know high school or even a grade school kid. I feel those same those same feelings when I go watch my son play, right? You know, in the NFL, and I, I'll have absolutely those same feelings when when we kick off in February of 2020. So you know, the game's been a constant, I think, in the lives of a lot of people, right? Not just me, but a lot of fans that. Uh, you know, people love to talk about the game and talk about, you know, who they used to watch 80, you know, in the 1980s or the 1970s or whatever. So it, it's a very important part of people's lives. Football is, is, is a, an important part of the American fabric, right? We, we're living in a somewhat fractured time, you know, one can say. But uh, with sports, I think, and football in particular, one of the few things that kind of bring, pe bring people together. Tell us about Coach Hayes. We're going to talk to him next. Uh, you know, how, how is he the, the one? How did he stand out head and shoulders above the other people that you talked to? So we, uh, you know, interviewed a whole bunch of coaches, that you, as you'd expect, and a lot of guys that were very interested in getting involved in our league. And I, I uh, knew ab about Coach Hayes. I, of course, remember him as a, as a player, not just at the Chiefs or at the Steelers, but also as, as a college kid at Iowa, a very good you know, football player. Uh, I watched him as he got involved with first college coaching. He was on Bob Stoops' staff at uh, Oklahoma when they won the national championship. Then he, of course, spent, uh, gosh, I don't know, 15, 16 years in the NFL as an, as an assistant coach and assistant head coach. Uh, Marvin Lewis, uh, his his boss, if you will, at the Cincinnati Bengals, thinks the world of him and gave me great reports on his 
you know, kind of. And what I liked about him is he's a Midwestern guy, right? He spent a lot of time in Kansas City, spent a lot of time in Iowa as a college student, in Cincinnati. These are all, you know, cities very, I think, similar to, uh, you know, to St. Louis. And he's a very down to earth, uh, Midwestern kind of guy. I grew up in Ohio. I like the Midwest. I like guys that have two feet on the ground and they're solid and sort of salt of the earth. Uh, and everything I expected from Jonathan, I've seen in, in him as, as we, we're, we're getting going. He's hired a great coaching staff of guys. He's got two, two guys I really admire, Chuck Long and uh, Doug Meacham. Uh, Chuck Long, the great quarterback from Iowa, who spent a lifetime coaching in, in college and in the National Football League. And Meacham is, is a brilliant offensive mind. So uh, he's, he's, he's on the right track with, with this group, and I think it's going to be a very competitive franchise. You mentioned Bob Stoops, and uh, if memory serves me right, he's also a coach in the league. Yes, Bob Stoops is our head coach in Dallas. Uh, Jim Zorn is up in Seattle, a uh, great Seahawks quarterback uh, who's also uh, going to do very well, I think. Uh, Winston Moss, longtime NFL player, much like Jonathan. They banged heads <laughs> against each other. Uh, Winston was uh, up in uh, Green Bay with Mike McCarthy for a number of years as assistant head coach. He's our coach in L.A. June Jones is down in Houston a longtime uh, NFL head coach at the Atlanta Falcons and up in CFL as well as in college, Hawaii, SMU. Uh, Pep Hamilton is our coach in Washington, D.C., longtime NFL and college assistant coach. And then uh, Kevin Gilbride, who was the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants when they won those two Super Bowls with uh, Eli Manning. Ke uh, Kevin's our head coach in New York. He was also the head coach of the Chargers uh, for a couple of years. We've got... Uh, We've got, am I missing anybody? Oh, Mark Trestman down in Tampa Bay who uh, won a couple of Grey Cups up in Canada was also the Bears head coach. So we've got some guys who've been around and have had a lot of success. Uh, and uh, I, that, that gives me a lot of confidence because, you know, guys like Bob Stoops don't coach sloppy football. <laughs> you know, they coach pretty good, pretty crisp, pretty well-played football. And that's uh, one of the things that makes us so exciting about our, our league. Well, hopefully this won't be the only time we see you here in St. Louis. We hope to see you here at some games. I will be here at a lot of games. Uh, as I mentioned, I, lo I love the Midwest. I love uh, towns that have uh, history, and St. Louis has you know, a lot of really good history. And I'm, I'm so excited about that first game in the Dome. I think it's going to rock. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Nice Appreciate to meet you. It. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks.